Hello again. Are you ready for part two of chapter 13? Okay, this is COM 320 Entrepreneurship Part 2. I'm going to go over the main points uh, from last recording just for you to review. There are three things a business can do to prepare for growth. Remember, appreciate the nature of business growth, staying committed to a core strategy, and planning for growth. There are 10 signs or warning signs that a business is growing too fast, like, for example, borrowing money to pay, routine operating expenses, extremely tight profit margins, overstretched staff, declining product quality, email starts going unanswered, customers' complaints are up, employees dread coming to work, productivity is falling, operating in a crisis mode becomes the norm, rather, then the exception. Those working with the business's financial structure are starting to worry. So, really important, 10 signs. Reasons for growth, economies of scale, economies of scope, market leadership, influence, power, and survivability, accommodate the growth of key customers, and attract and retain talented employees. Six, six very important um, reasons. Accommodate for growth, key customers, remember employees, market leadership, power, influence, and two type of economies, scale and scope. Don't forget that. Then for managing growth, just remember there are there's the this nice graph, sales, time, Five stages, five stages of growth, five phases, introduction, early growth, continuous growth, maturity, and decline. See the graph, how it, he, see the curve, how it evolves over time, and remember the explanation and the uh, strategies or um, the right things to do in each one of those. It's just a review. Now, let's continue. The challenges of growth, there are two categories of challenges for firm growth. The first one is the managerial capacity problem in day-to-day -day challenges of growing a firm. Really important. Managerial capacity problem in day-to-day -day challenges of, of growing a firm. Here is the explanation for managerial capacity problem. Managerial capacity is firm are collections of productive resources that are organized in an administrative framework. As a firm goes about its routine activities, it recognizes opportunities to grow. The problem with this scenario is that firms are not always prepared or able to grow because of limited managerial capacity. And what is limited managerial capacity? It is nothing more than the owners or founders of the company are not capable or they don't have the skills anymore to run the business, to run the company, and they need help. Are they prepared to give up? Let's see. A firm's administrative framework. A firm's administrative framework consists of two kinds of services that are important for firm growth. Entrepreneurial services generate new market product and service ideas, while managerial services administer the routine functions of the firm and facilitate the, prof the profitable execution of new opportunities. New product and services ideas require substantial managerial services or managerial capacity to be successfully implemented. This is a complex problem because if a firm has insufficient managerial services, to properly implement its new product and service ideas, it can't grow. Wow, this is a lot of stuff, a lot of theory. I don't understand pretty much, but it's okay. Let's continue. A firm's administrative framework continues. Oh my God, more theory. Continuation from previous slide. The reason, the reason a firm can't quickly increase its managerial services to take advantage of new product or service ideas 
is that it is expensive to hire new employees. It is expensive to hire new employees, key employees, skillful uh, workers. It's not easy. It takes time for new hires to be socialized into the culture of a firm. And it takes time for new employees to acquire firm specific skills and establish trusting relationships with other members of the firm self-explained self-understood when a firm's managerial resources are insufficient to take advantage of its new product in service opportunities the subsequent bottleneck is referred to as a managerial capacity problem did you hear that when a firm's managerial resources are insufficient to take advantage of its new product in service opportunities the subsequent bottleneck is referred to as the managerial capacity problem. Additional challenges as a firm grows, it is faced with a dual challenges of adverse selection and moral hazard. Adverse selection means that as the number of employees uh, a firm needs increases, it becomes increasingly difficult for, for the firm to find the right employees, place them in a in appropriate, in appropriate positions and provide adequate supervision. Moral hazard, on the other hand, means that as a firm grows and adds personnel, the new hires typically do not have the same ownership incentives as the original founders. So many, so the new hires may not be as motivated as the founders to put in long to put in long hours and may even try to avoid hard work. Self-explained, really nice understood, adverse selection. So that means uh, it is difficult to find the right employees and even put them, place them in an appropriate position, moral hazard. It's nothing more than uh, uh, there's new management team coming into the business and they don't have or they um, are not willing to put the effort or the extra hours of the um, a lot of motivation in it because they are not simply working for them they are working for someone else uh, not as the founder did and the basic model of firm growth is entrepreneurial services the first thing is recognition of new market product and, and service opportunities requires increase in managerial services, administration of, of the routine functions of the firm and the execution of new business opportunities. All of this, the goal is to accomplish, accomplish grow, firm growth. Now, one more thing here. Between entrepreneurial services and managerial services, there is the ability to increase managerial capacity is constrained by Socialize, socialization of new man managers, managerial motivation, adverse selection, and moral hazard. And the last thing for today is the day-to-day -day challenges of, of growing a firm. The challenge number one is the cash flow management. Really important, a firm requires an increasing amount of cash, cash as it grows. It's obviously a problem. Price stability. When you plan to grow, the, the financial structure changes. If, if growth comes at the expense, expense of a competitor's market share, expect retaliation. A price war couldn't, couldn't zoom. So expect retaliation if you want to steal some market share from a competitor. Quality control. An increase in firm activity can result in quality control issues if a firm is not able to increase its resources to handle the extra work. Capital constraints. Capital constraints are an ever-present problem for growing firms. Uh, these two guys, quality control and capital constraints, you know already, they, they will be always present when you wanna work, when we, you wanna grow. There's even some more. These two female entrepreneurs, you see they are pretty, just launched a casual dining restaurant. Their ability to grow the business successfully will hinge largely on how they manage the day-to-day -day challenges of growing a firm. 
And this is all for now. If you need to contact me, sorry, I'm not available. Thank you very much for listening. This is the end of part two, chapter two. Thank you. Chapter 13. Thank you.